Before this video begins, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Also, be sure to check out my affiliate links down below so you can get discounts on different car mods and products. Alrighty, let's get into this review. Hello and welcome! Today we are reviewing a 2022 Ford F-150 Lariat Lightning. This has the 5 foot 7 inch bed and is finished in black. I would like to thank Flood Ford Lincoln in Narragansett, Rhode Island for allowing me to both review and drive this truck. The drive will be out soon on the channel so make sure to not miss that. This is a two row full size truck with seating for five. It weighs in at about 8,250 pounds and stickers close to $80,000 as currently optioned. This is powered of course by an electric motor with the extended range battery with 320 miles of range. This puts out an impressive roughly 580 horsepower and 775 pound-feet of torque. This is mated with a single speed direct drive transmission. There is of course no startup because this is silent. This is a four-wheel drive truck getting 73 city, 60 on the highway, and 66 MPGE. This takes roughly 14 hours to charge at 240 volts. This rides on 20 inch alloy wheels and those are flatter than average uh, for better, better aerodynamics. And that has 275 tires wrapped around each wheel. This has a tow hitch and is a very capable electric truck towing up to 10,000 pounds. It also has a roughly 1,900 pound payload capacity. For safety features, you get roll stability control, forward collision warning with avoidance detection, blind spot monitoring, lane departure alert with lane keep assist, and it also does come with trailer sway control. So this F-150 is uh, in a small pack, but a growing and emerging pack of electric pickup trucks. Its competitors as of August 2022 currently include the GMC Hummer, the Rivian R1T, the Tesla Cybertruck, if that ever releases, and the Silverado Electric. As for trims, you could get a base pro trim of this with a standard battery pack with 230 mile range, and that is the pro around $40,000. And then you go to XLT, Lariat, which is this trim, and you can also go one more to Platinum. This is 232.7 inches long, 80 inches wide without the mirrors, has 8.9 inches of ground clearance, and is 78.9 inches tall. This rides on independent rear suspension, and it does have a different chassis from a regular gasoline F-150. So that's a bit different because uh, they had to rearrange so much stuff because this is of course an electric vehicle from the gasoline that they did a whole new chassis. And they also were, due to great engineering, able to keep a full-size aluminum spare tire under the rear. A lot of truck buyers, uh, you know, require that, and they did not want to give up on their customers. Also on the exterior, for your charge port instead of a gas tank, that's up front on the left. So if you tap it, it'll open, but also you do have a dummy port on the right side just so it looks more symmetrical. I think that's a good choice. Up front, you do have a front trunk or frunk, which is both accessible by the infotainment, by your key fob, and by a button inside, as well as a typical latch lift gate up front. We'll check that out in a moment. In the rear, you do get a spray-in bed liner for your 5 foot 7 inch bed, and it does have both a rear step and a rail, which is really cool, so I'll show you those in just a moment as well. One really cool feature about this truck is it has an optional $4,000 power accessory kit so that this truck can become a mobile generator and could actually power your house. Per Ford, it could power a regular house for 3 days and up to 10 days if you limited power usage. So that is really cool how capable this truck truly is. Alrighty, and let's have a step outside. Alright, so for the exterior, this looks pretty similar to a typical F-150 in its sheet metal, which is a great perk because it meant Ford was able to keep costs pretty low and have it enter, and have it enter at a very competitive price. So, uh, some of the differences from a normal F-150 include this giant light bar that uh, doesn't just go around the sides, it also goes across the top of the, uh, the hood area. So, it looks uh, very good in my opinion. And uh, typical LED headlights, and then down below, no fog lights, but you do get some tow hooks. And you can probably hear some cooling fans going. This is an electric motor, so it's silent, but it needs to run cool. So, there are always going to be cooling fans running. 
As for your grill itself, it's actually not a grill, but this is just your front cover. It's a uh, hard plastic, uh, has some geometry, like some diamonds, a little bit, triangles. And uh, I think it looks really good. It does look uh, a little bit uh, like a normal grill until you get close. So I think they did a good job disguising that. One weird perk up front, uh, it does get an old style antenna. I thought they would put the typical one like up on the roof, a little nubby one, but whatever. It doesn't look too bad. Here are those wheels. You get some uh, general tires here, General Grabber HTS on this specific model. And uh, here are those wheels. So they are gray, they're aluminum alloy. They look pretty good. They're just a bit more uh, toned down than some others. And they don't have as deep of a cone uh, inside toward the lug nuts because uh, it helps with aerodynamics, not having the wind have to go in here and then uh, cut back out. So a lot more will pass by. Here's that charge port. So if you tap it like so, it opens. And of course, here is your charge port itself. I think it looks pretty good, pretty subtle. Nice little Lariat badging, like in a normal uh, F-150. And over here is a dummy panel, so this does not open, but it does look symmetrical. It looks nice. For your side profile, it looks just like a normal F-150. I think it looks awesome, though. I, I like the look of the F-150 currently. You do get a metal side step. It's not power, but it, it's very solid and well made. Over here, you do get a power, um, power keypad, so that's common of a lot of Fords. You get a pretty large mirror. You could put even more extensions for a tow mirror on here, so that's cool. And here is your blind spot monitor down there. This is a super crew truck, so it's uh, the largest you can get with full-size rear doors. Here is uh, one of the very few uh, areas that show you're driving a Lightning. So here's a Lightning badge. It has some blue on the edge of the badging, so it does stand out a bit more from a regular badge. In the rear, you get a little F-150 Easter egg right here and a nice 3D cutout of the rear light. And additionally, you do get a rear light that goes all the way across with some reverse lights up there, which is different from a gasoline F-150. Over here, you do get an American flag with a lightning bolt to signify also that you are driving a lightning. And here, opening the, uh, the rear gate, it is uh, very light, very damped, so that is awesome. And also, there are a couple perks in here. You got a couple rulers, so this is inches, this is centimeters. And then also, you do get uh, some clamps on both sides. So you could put a clamp right here or a vise if you're doing some woodworking or something similar. Also, if you were to open this, now a clip will be on screen with the, the step up right there and also the railing that you can grab. Very nice. Then also you get, of course, a spray in bed liner and uh, you get LED lights in here, which is cool. And you get a lot of ports. So you get a 240 uh, volt full port. So you can run full appliances here and also four 120 volt ports. Very, very good. And some tie downs, which is also great to have. And then down below, you do get your tow hitch and your full-size spare tire. You also do get some lights over there on that part of the sides, sidebar. Up in the front here to open your frunk, you would uh, pull right here, there's a button. It is powered, so it beeps a few times and then it will open for you. Inside of here, you get about 14 cubic feet of storage, which is pretty similar to a midsize or small sedan. So it's really not lacking at all in here. And then also you do get a uh, 400 pound load limit for this little uh, tray for the top. And you get a little cutout down here for smaller items or just stuff you want to hide better. It's nice having a, a frunk in addition to a bed because if you want stuff out of the way, you don't want it stolen and you don't want it wet if you don't have a cover. So this is very nice to have. You also do get some uh, little hooks in here, just plastic ones, not that durable, but you could get those for, uh, for groceries or similar. You do get a little uh, anti-kidnap button, of course, to open from the inside. And you get some LED lights that actually shine down from right here. And they cover all of this area. You do have a windshield washer fluid, which is nice. And then uh, thanks to Doug Demuro for uh, mentioning this in his review. If you pull these little tabs off, this is a basic uh, access point to your traditional car battery. Because the large battery is way deep under the vehicle now, you can still use this to get jumped yourself or jump other cars with uh, some jumper cables. Just right there. Very nice choice from Ford. And closing it, it is powered just like so. And let's have a step inside. Alrighty, so as for the interior materials, I actually like it. There's a lot of great variation here. So for one, you get this uh, wood trim here. You also get uh, like the old BMW i3. It looks a lot like uh, that type of uh, like vinyl or cloth type of material. And I think it looks really nice. Very, very good. And then also you get some brown accent stitching throughout a lot of this, which I think looks very good. This is well padded here. It's not padded all the way down below, but that's okay. It's a truck. 
It's not trying to be exactly luxury. The top trim may have some more luxury touches, but you do have a full B&O audio system in here and memory seating for the driver's seat. For the driver's seat, you do get uh, a decent amount of features. You get a full power seat, but unfortunately only two-way lumbar support. I do wish it had four-way. But this is gonna be a leather seat with some nice piping and two-tone leather. It is perforated, heated, and cooled for both the driver and the passenger. You don't get a door sill here, I'm a little surprised, without lightning badging. But uh, yeah, they really are going pretty subtle with this truck. They want it to be just like a normal F-150. To the left of your steering wheel, you do get some mirror controls. You get a frunk button, which is awesome. You also get a rear lift gate release, a rear tailgate release button. And you also get light controls as usual. And you get some pedal controls, so these are powered. And then also your electronic parking brake. And if you're wondering what they did with the typical hood button, this is, they've retained a spot, but it's actually just a manual release for if your battery is dead and you need to access the frunk. As for material choice in here, I think it's a uh, pretty, pretty good. It's a lot of variation, a lot of good looking plastic, but not too much hard plastic, a lot of soft touch material, and a lot of that nice copper contrast stitching. Up top, there is a little hard plastic here, but uh, most of it has this like nice vinyl and uh, cloth type of material. And then also, uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of nice soft touch materials where you would expect it. For your steering wheel, this is a heated steering wheel. It is leather wrapped, very nice soft leather with some nice bolsters at 10 and two. And it's a very simple layout here, which I like because uh, a lot of steering wheels are a big pain to get used to, but this is very nicely laid out and very simple. For your gauge cluster, it's fully digital. You do get uh, both two battery temp gauges, which is pretty good to have, of course. And this has the uh, extended range battery. So max, max charge would be 320 mile range. And we have 303 right here. This has 568 miles. And uh, yeah, I think it, it looks similar again to a normal gasoline F-150. You get a normal stop start button there and you get some trailer controls as in, uh, as in with most trucks. Over here in the center, of course, is very eye catching, a new 15 inch infotainment screen. And that comes with sync four. So I always liked Sync 3, it's still in use, but uh, Sync 4 is making its way over. It has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in here, along with navigation. And uh, I think it's a very nice system to use, very simple. And uh, yeah, very, very quick responses. Like look at this, here's an app. It responds as quick as a uh, smartphone would. Over in here, you get some vehicle settings like drive modes. So that is cool. And then you get a lot of cameras, very high quality, which is awesome. Because a lot of cars have not been using the highest quality across all brands. So. I'm happy to see some better quality in here. Over here you get towing, of course, and you get something called smart hitch. So what Ford claims is that range will drop in here at a similar rate to a gasoline engine if it were towing. So uh, Ford actually included this. So this is called smart hitch and it can you can either type in or it can learn your uh, trailer weight and specifications so that it can adjust the uh, range more effectively. So you won't be stranded or have a giant drop in your range unexpectedly because it will compensate for it with analysis. Also, you get onboard scales, which I haven't personally seen before in the truck, so that's really cool. Uh, so what that means is actually the rear bed will measure your current weight inside of it. So look at this, you have zero pounds, that is correct. And that's a very nice thing to make sure you don't hit your, um, you know, hit your maximum payload, which is about 1,900 pounds, pretty good. And then the rest of it is just very nice and easy to use. Down below there, you do get, oh, also you do get a hard scroll wheel, which I appreciate because uh, digital ones are often just a pain. Here you get a wireless charging pad for your phone and a deep storage well, as well as a uh, USB type A and type C, and also more storage to the right of the driver's knee. You got a traditional shifter in here, which is kind of cool, and it folds into the floor. And one of the perks of that is you have this that can fold perfectly flat and become a workspace. You do get a thin slot. I think that is for a smartphone, so that's really cool. And two typical cup holders. If you open this fully up, it's gonna be a multi-tier storage area for your center console. And uh, yeah, it's very large as it should be in such a large truck. You get some typical uh, cup holders back there as well for the rear passengers. On the right, you get two glove boxes, which is nice. One up top and one down below. And they're pretty large, pretty good. For the seats up here, I think they're comfortable. They have uh, not too much thigh bolstering, but they have a bit better in the uh, torso area. And they have a lot of adjustments. I think they're very good. And for your visor, let's see if it passes the visor test. Yes, it does. It slides and covers the whole window. That is great. You also do get a panoramic sunroof in this specific model. And uh, yeah, that's two panels right there. Looks great. 
and visibility of course is awesome. And let's go check out the seat. All right, so in the rear, I'm six feet tall. I left the seat where I was. I have great room back here. Knee, leg, elbow, headroom, everything's great. You do get heated rear seats back here as well with two levels, which is nice, as well as a 12 volt charge port. And over here you get a USB type A and type C and a full household 120 volt port. So that's very nice to have. Additionally, uh, the window panes are very high, but the sills are very low. So it's not claustrophobic at all back here. And the seats actually have very good uh, back support back here. I wish they had a little longer of thigh support going out a bit, but back support is very good. They are leather and feel nice. And here you just get two cup holders uh, in a pretty regular, uh, you know, center pull down. And let's go discuss my final thoughts. Alrighty, so for my final thoughts on this F-150 Lightning, I think it's really just a, a great feat of engineering because it offers such a great price range. You can get a 230 mile range for right around $40,000, which is very, very good. And, uh, you know, less than half of uh, a Rivian R1T, which is the more common electric truck at the moment. And uh, yeah, I think it has a great uh, setup because it's just a Ford F-150. It's tried and true, it's proven. And um, yeah, the material choice is also very interesting. I like the interior in here. It has great uh, safety features, all the, um, of course this is a higher trim, but it really does have uh, a lot of the creature comforts that are making its way into trucks today. And uh, room is great, comfort is great, and uh, it looks great as well. It's, it's subtle, and they did it for a reason that way, and I appreciate it. Alrighty, that'll just about wrap up this review. Thank you very much to Flood Ford Lincoln in Narragansett, Rhode Island for allowing me to review this truck. I'll be driving it next, so make sure to check that out on the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and take care.